As Pennsylvania's local governments struggle to provide essential services to their citizens, an outdated Pennsylvania law serves as an albatross around their collective necks. Counties, cities, townships, boroughs, and school districts are all saddled with prevailing wage requirements adopted more than 50 years ago. And the term prevailing wage is really a misnomer. The wage they're required to pay on projects with costs larger than $25,000 is not prevailing to their area, but to the big cities of the state. Washington Township Manager Michael Christopher says the mandate has high costs and no benefit to taxpayers. It's an ongoing, everyday problem. Every time we try to do a project, we end up paying more money than we have to. We end up with less projects because of it, and there is no appreciable value from this prevailing wage. We have inspectors to make sure our roads are built correctly so it doesn't impact the quality of those jobs. We have the the unified construction code and with inspectors to make sure buildings are built correctly so there's no benefit there. As a result of the prevailing wage, we just pay more for the same projects, have less projects being accomplished that taxpayers are losing. Members of the House Republican Caucus agree. Representative Cheryl Delosier of Cumberland County says prevailing wage requirements artificially inflate public project costs. As a taxpayer myself, I know that there are areas um, around me in my district and outside of my district. We've heard many, many cases where they put a bid out, got many bids at certain levels, and then realized it had to be under prevailing wage, rebid the project, and the costs went up simply because of prevailing wage. Not because of better workers, not because of a better job to be done for the taxpayer, simply because they applied the prevailing wage dollars. And I don't think that's fair to the taxpayers. I don't mind, and I think everybody would agree, that we need to pay a fair wage for fair labor. But what we also need to understand is we have to be paying what it is that's in our area. Our prevailing wage rate in central Pennsylvania is established by rates that are down in the southeast. The southeast costs are much higher than what we pay in Adams County, Cumberland County, Franklin County, in central Pennsylvania. That needs to be balanced out at the very least. We need to make sure it's our prevailing wage, not Philadelphia's, that we are paying. Delosier's Cumberland County colleague, Representative Stephen Bloom of Carlisle, agrees with that assessment. He says it's state government mandated waste. We're seeing jobs not being done, roads not being fixed things not being built and taxpayer dollars being literally wasted on these projects. It's the opposite of government efficiency. Prevailing wage, instead of efficiency, prevailing wage imposes prevailing waste on the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. And the cost of the prevailing wage mandate is high. For large and medium-sized communities, it can amount to millions of dollars. Township Commissioner Ken Martin says that's the case for his township in Cumberland County. Up around Township will have awarded bids for 12 large projects totaling more than $27 million over the last three years. The increased costs due to prevailing wages for these projects will cost taxpayers of our Township between $5.4 and $6.7 million. Local officials say the cost of the state's prevailing wage mandate is so high, it actually stifles job creation and economic development. One example of that is the experience of Southampton Township in Franklin County. Supervisor Samuel Kressler says Southampton found buying adjacent land and three existing buildings cheaper than the prevailing wage inflated cost of constructing one new building. We were going to build a, a six-bay a six garage and we budgeted like 425 for that. The, with prevailing wage it came in about 800000 Well we balked at that difference and then talked to our neighbor who had a property adjacent to our township building of five acres and three large buildings, all uh, garage type buildings. And we ended up buying all that for 700000 as opposed to just building one building with prevailing wage. The need for revision of prevailing wage laws is not a partisan issue, it's a taxpayer issue. Lancaster County Representative Gordon Denlinger explained. As projects are bidded uh, using prevailing wage guidelines, that uh, these projects come in 20, 25, sometimes as high as 30 percent higher than they otherwise would. And at the end of the day, who pays the, the tab for that? Well, it's the taxpaying citizen. So if it's a school district issue, 
that flows out through higher property taxes and less projects that can be uh, tackled by districts. But at the uh, municipalities level particularly, what you see is a direct correlation to less road miles maintained, uh, sidewalks, uh, uh, local bridges, and so forth, uh, and less projects that can be tackled uh, in the infrastructure sense. So there is uh, a cost in terms of public safety, I believe, that's borne out. And the other side of it, of course, is the tax burden that goes up. And the municipalities, of course, are taxed largely through the property tax that flows, uh, the spring tax that flows out from the county level, uh, as well as some state money. But uh, what you're seeing is higher tax burdens and less projects uh, tackled at the local levels. That exact sentiment was echoed by Lancaster Mayor Rick Gray and Danville Borough Councilwoman issue. Betty Ann Moyer. It's a taxpayer issue. If you think of what happens here in Harrisburg, would ask them to think of the ramifications of what they do here on local government and on local taxpayers. The municipalities in Pennsylvania have just the property tax. That's all that they can really raise. That's all that they can really do to get funds. Unfortunately, provisions like this have a direct effect in increasing the cost of services provided at the lower level and forcing us to increase property taxes, one of the most inequitable taxes there is. We're not calling for an end to the prevailing wage. We're simply calling for common sense updates uh, for a law that was passed more than half a century ago. This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue nor is it a union or an anti-union issue. This is a taxpayer issue. How can we stretch the taxpayer dollars and do more with less? How can the problem be fixed? One proposal would call for updating the threshold or cost figure above which projects would require prevailing wage. Representative Fred Keller says an update of that threshold is way overdue. The prevailing wage regulation, to understand it, goes all the way back into the 1960s when John Kennedy was president. And, and looking at some things, and the thing I tell people most is if you went to, to purchase a house in 1963 or build a house in 1963 and you went and you asked for a mortgage from the, from the bank and they gave you a $25,000 mortgage, that would build you one heck of a nice house in 1963. I say fast forward now to 2013. You know, you go to the, to the bank and you say, I'd like a mortgage. Uh, the banker gives you $25,000 and says, go build your house. You aren't going to be able to do that. So prevailing wage in general, I think, is just outdated. Uh, the specific proposals to raise the threshold at which uh, jobs are subject to prevailing wage uh, bidding and bureaucracy and so forth, uh, at least, at the very minimum, needs to be adjusted to account for the rise in inflation and make sure that the same projects that were exempt in 1963 when John Kennedy was president are exempt in, in 2013. If you think the cost of prevailing wage doesn't really impact you or your family, think again. Local officials say the costs impact their attempts to keep bridges and schools safe. And the Youngwood decision particularly affects maintenance of the more than 4,000 county-owned bridges. By falling under the prevailing wage requirement, Fewer bridges can be maintained within the same budget allocations. Everybody's aware that after Sandy Hook uh, occurred that all of us uh, in the schools across the Commonwealth have been looking at how we can make our own schools safer for not only our students but our staff. And what we did, we couldn't afford to do a lot, but we had to do some minimum upgrades that we felt were absolutely essential for safety. That project uh, is costing in my district $100,000. And because it's a labor-intensive project, the estimates that you heard of 10 to 17% are averages. Depending on the amount of labor involved, it can be a higher amount uh, overall. And that's the amount of cost, would, we would save about $23,000 if we did not have to pay prevailing wage and could use the customary wages locally in my community. Veteran lawmaker Representative Ron Marsico says he's been working on the issue for almost 25 years, trying to educate taxpayers to push his colleagues to action. But he thinks 2013 think, uh, might be the with, year. Uh, with the, the economy the way it is today, with the local economy, uh, the fact that the taxpayers are, are really getting uh, fed up with what's going on uh, with uh, prevailing wage and other, uh, other uh, issues. It could be the year. Uh, we're going to push it real hard 
Uh, I think that uh, with the transportation funding uh, that needs to be done, uh, if we give the counties or the locals or the state the opportunity to repeal prevailing wage, uh, those tax dollars uh, can go a long way in, in providing uh, more uh, funding for our roads, our highways, and our bridges. And legislative action has begun on prevailing wage. The House Labor Relations Committee recently passed two bills. One, sponsored by Columbia County Representative David Millard, would raise the project cost threshold to $100,000. And the second, sponsored by Representative Marsico, would reduce the types of road maintenance projects subject to prevailing wage.